You're probably aware of the advances that have happened in the world of AI art, and inevitably that has come for music. I remember talking about this with people about a year ago, saying that yes, everything that you're seeing will eventually come for music, and it will get to a point where it is convincing and appealing enough to use for your work, and well, here it is, and it is very, very good. In a way, it's surprising that it came on so fast, because you know, not to lessen the complexity of the machine learning software that it took for AI art to get to this place, but what is generating there are static images. But to do this for music, you're dealing with something that's time-based. It's linear chunks that have to be generated in sequence and make sense in that sequence. And, of course, you're dealing with multiple layers of elements simultaneously. What you're generating at the end is just a stereo audio file, yes, but to do it convincingly, you have to juggle all those elements that you would normally expect to be in a song and have them consistent all the way through. So yes, it has taken a year to get to this point, but the speed has been pretty impressive. And I guess, in a way, it's not that surprising, because when they first started playing with Midjourney last year, in June, it was producing some cool stuff, pretty scrabbly looking, but it was interesting what it was coming up with, though nothing you'd really want to use professionally in your own work. But by the time it got to the start of September, it was producing stuff that was indistinguishable from photographs that I would take while out in the hills. Uh, people think that this is going to keep exploding exponentially. I disagree with this. It's already starting to slow down the actual pace of the improvements. And you can see this with uh, what's happening with the latest updates in Midjourney itself. It's all aimed at giving more control back to the user. You can zoom out of your current picture and it will fill out the details around that. You can make it move in very specific directions. You can tell it exactly what to do when it generates those new parts. And you can even go back and edit part of the text prompts that you made the initial generation with and make changes there so that you get to keep what you like about the original image, but make changes to it that you specifically direct. And all of this shows that, yes, we are starting to peak and level off when it comes to the actual quality, because what you're looking for there is to have something convincing to the human eye. And then, instead of having the AI just do everything based on the text prompt, which is what some people were worried about would keep being the case all the way through, Instead, more creativity about controlling the process is being given back to the user. And this will absolutely be aimed at the music side of things as well. And what's happening as a result of this is there's a never-ending stream of content coming. And if you're involved in creating it, then you're part of this stream of content too. So people who make their living from creating their own work and either selling it to an audience or through their employer, their commission to create it, people are rightly worried about what that means for their future. Now, the AI isn't going away, so there are a few options to deal with this. You can either incorporate the AI into your workflow, uh, show up some of your weaknesses, get it to generate some ideas that you build upon yourself, uh, generally make things more efficient. Or you could discard the AI entirely and concentrate on what makes you and your work entirely unique. Make yourself greater than you even were before, using the AI to spur you on to greater heights so that you can say to the audience or your employer, hey, this is what makes me and my work unique and worth paying for. The other alternative is to just go on social media and... <coughs> and 
Aye, that'll help. And what's happening as a result of all of this is that culture at large is working out its relationship with artwork, whether that be actual still images, music, writing, even for things that you don't traditionally think of creative, like programming, for example. We're all working out what it is that we hold about that as valuable. And the thing that seems to keep cropping up is how meaningful is this to me? What ultimate purpose does it serve in my life? It'll be very interesting to see how this pans out, but one thing I think is certain is that this is inevitably going to happen very, very quickly. And for my part, I won't be using AI for music. There's far too much satisfaction to be gained from doing everything entirely yourself. And since I use Renoise and there's a lot of technicality that you can get to grips with there, when you do so, it often unveils uh, untapped creativity alongside it. And so if you were to hand over grappling with that technicality to something like an AI, you would lose that opportunity not just to learn things for yourself, but to get access to that extra creativity that is instilled within you when you grapple with the technical side of things yourself. And as a final point, it is very gratifying to finally finish something, uh, realise it's good enough to be released in the world, and then do so and be able to stand behind it and say, hey, I made this, I made all of this. Which leads into the next point. There is a major issue already going on, which is that people, well, now that AI is here, they will assume that your work, either in part or entirely, has been created by AI. And one of the ways to fend this off is for you to show your work. Now this is not going to be for everyone, or even appropriate for every medium. But if you can make this work for you, it gives you an extra avenue to create extra content which will be very engaging and entertaining for your potential audience. And Renoise is very well positioned for this, because the very first thing that you see upon launching Renoise, the thing that puts people off if they're complete beginners, is the pattern editor. And it shows you right there almost all of your songwriting. Unless you're one of these people that likes to use a lot of phrases, but for most people, all of your songwriting, all the fine details, is right there on display. Now, if you're watching this video and you have no idea what Renoise is, and this looks awful and very off-putting, then on my channel, you'll find links to beginner's tutorials for Renoise, and it shows you that it's actually very easy to get to grips with if you're taking through it one step at a time. It's actually very easy to learn. And if you're interested in more stuff, then youtube.com slash renoise for all of the videos. The other great thing about Renoise is it has a lot of various features that you can get to grips with in an incredibly technical way. And because things are mostly modular, you can link them together in a customized fashion. Something that is unique to you and is worth showing off via videos or what have you to show the work you're doing, and that's something that I've done in the past. Uh, last year, when I created what is now a demo song for the song No Mercy for Tyrants, I shared the song files, I created a long video showing off what's happening in all the instruments, and I think interesting, engaging content like that is one of the ways that you can show your work. Now, I intended to do this for full releases a while ago, actually sharing the song files, as each release was put out. Now, I don't think that is appropriate for absolutely everything. It is something that I would still like to do, but for certain releases where it is appropriate. I'm also not advocating for everyone to do what I'm suggesting here, uh, sharing the song files 
or even giving away some of your secret sauce about how things work. The customization that you've made for your unique sound, that's really not going to be for everyone and each individual should of course just do this to the extent that they feel is appropriate for them, including not doing it at all. The other option is to live stream your creative process. And I've thought about doing this for quite some time, but the reason I've held off is because, frankly, most of the creative process is kind of boring. It's sitting there, thinking about things, considering what you might be doing, trying things out and failing, and it not actually even being entertaining at all for an audience to watch. So one of the things that you would need to do is either go in for uh, streaming a specific part that you already understand in advance that will be entertaining for the audience to watch. But that might be very brief and there's no guarantee that it's actually going to be engaging in any way. The other thing you can do is build projects in advance uh, so that you're fully prepped to go and perhaps involve ways for audience participation and do that instead so that it's going to be a separate type of release from your normal release schedule. And this is something that I've thought about. It would involve using Renoise tools to program something that you can generate things uh, very quickly with, although still have a massive amount of creative input and perhaps links things to uh, Unreal Engine for a bit more visual flair as well. As you can tell from the way I'm talking about this, this is still all very up in the air. Uh, nothing's been put down yet, but I think there is a way of making this work so that you create something like an album or an EP at the end of it that is created through this specific, uh, very curated type of process. And as long as you release things at the end that are clearly labelled as being different from your normal process of uh, creating and releasing things, then that should be okay. And in my particular case, it would also allow me to then release the song files alongside the downloads of the audio at the same time. So these are just some ideas that I've had about how you might go about showing your work and we'll see how this plays out over time. But as far as the live streaming goes, now certainly seems to be a better time to do it than previously. Because uh, when you improvise things, as will happen during live streaming, a lot of humour is going to come out. And, well, certain overbearing sensorious types who've been in control of things on these platforms uh, their grip has certainly lessened over the past while, or even been let go entirely. And thank fuck for that. <laughs> <laughs>